Hey everybody, this is Matthew from MiniWarGaming.com and I want to show you a program that here at Mini Wargaming we use all of the time and it's become very indispensable for our battle reports and just for general gaming in Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy, War Machine, and pretty much any other miniature game we play here. And that is Army Builder. And Army Builder is made by a company called Wolf Lair who does other software to support the wargaming and other gaming niches as well. If you're not familiar with what Army Builder is, it's basically a army creation tool where you can quickly throw together what you want to bring for a game. It also shows you all the different options, points costs, and even a lot of the statistics as well. This by no means replaces your codex or any of the army books that you'd buy from the various manufacturers. You still need to have those as this will not have all of the details, but what it does do is allow you to quickly throw together an army. I want to demo this product to you where you can you can buy this pretty much at uh, online stores at store.miniwargaming.com or even at the Wolf Lair site or in a lot of uh, retail stores as well that supply wargaming materials. So right here as soon as you come into it you get to basically choose which game you're going to do and then what army you want to do. So I want to show you what this looks like. So I'm just going to quickly hit create and start this over. Now the army builder program itself does not come with all the stats for Warhammer 40k Fantasy War Machine and Hordes. Uh, because that would be against IP laws and copyright laws for them to provide that. Instead, what it basically is, is a generic program that allows you to have any gaming system that you want to create data sheets for. You can put it into the program yourself. However, there are a lot of independent volunteers who create and maintain the data files for Army Builder, and so you don't actually need it for the popular games. You can just go in and download the 40k fantasy war machine hordes flames of war and lots of other games in fact let me give you a quick show of how many we have switch gaming system right now i have 40k fantasy war machine and hordes all in there but we can click uh, get updates and you can see all the different games that it has available even ones that i've never heard of uh, like um, Hell Dorado. I've never actually heard of that one. I've heard of Confrontation and Flames of War, Lord of the Rings, Warpath, Starship Troopers. They have the different languages as well. These, All these files right here that you're seeing are not by Wolf Lair. Instead, they are by independent volunteers, but you can download them into Army Builder, and then they have all the stats and everything that you need, and then the volunteers keep them up to date as well. So I'm just going to hit Finish there. You can also create your own and import them as well. So we're going to load 40k 5th edition and it gives you some messages and then you choose which army you want to do. We're going to do orcs today and how many points you can click on that and there's a bunch of preset points or you can choose unlimited size or you can choose restricted to a certain amount of points and we're going to do 2000 points and then you can also choose the rules that you're going to be using and what you can basically do here is you can change your roster options such as for an apocalypse game which doesn't really adhere to the force organization chart of 40k or you could choose like planet strike and then you scroll back up and instead of a normal mission scenario you would choose to be the attacker or defender as those have an effect on the force organization chart and the rules you can also do things like include imperial armor or non-codex materials things that um, are maybe not officially released by games workshop but in this case we're just going to uncheck that and we're going to choose normal mission and then we'll click create gives you a few little notices and then basically all your options for your different units are right here you can break them down by the force organization HQ elite troop fast attack heavy support and of course for other games this will look differently uh, war machines formations and legendary are obviously more for apocalypse so we're not going to be looking at those so I want to show you basically how quickly you can put together your your army if you already have a basic idea of what you have. So let's pretend that this is going to be led by a war boss. So I just double click that and it appears down here in the actual army list. It'll always tell you in the bottom left if there's anything wrong with your army. So if there's a red um, exclamation mark then you'll see that there's problems with your army. If it says green all invalidated then you know that your army is legal even if it's less than 2,000 points. So let's say in a, over here on the right hand side we have the options for the unit that we have selected. In this case we have the war boss selected. And you have all the different things and their points cost. The ones that are grayed out you can't change because they they just always are there. Or the ones like the choppa, you don't uncheck it, you just simply choose big choppa and it automatically 
deselects the Chapa for you. And then you can see I can't choose the Power Claw now because you can't have a big Chapa and a Power Claw. So this will follow all the different rules. It's usually 99% correct. It is volunteer driven, so there could be mistakes, but for the most part you're going to find that it is quite accurate. I think I've only ever found one or two mistakes in all the time I've been using it. And we've been using this program probably for three or four years. So let's give him a Shuda and an Evie Armor and a Boss Bowl. I'm not going to actually make a good Orc army here. I'm just going to make an army. Then we've got to go to our troop selection. And let's go to these boys. Now you'll notice that there's pictures over here. You can actually click Edit, and you can go through all the different types of units, and you can choose pictures for them. You can either download pictures and then just uh, put them on here from a file, or you can give a URL of a picture from the web, and then it'll just put it in there for you. Now the pictures I'm using here are from the Mini Wargaming store, submitted by uh, various... Um, various customers, various volunteers. This one I think is submitted by Paul Graham. Uh, he does videos on miniwargaming.com as well. So you can see we have some different ones here. We have like uh, the battle wagon, we have a picture. Some of them don't have pictures. This is a complete optional thing. You don't need pictures, but if you really want to customize it and um, have a lot of fun with it, then I definitely recommend adding those pictures in. So let's add some boys. So we click on the boys, and we're going to make this a group of truck boys. So you scroll down to the bottom, you can see they have an option for a transport, and so you give truck, and you see that it then says, okay, these boys have a truck. And if I try to increase past 12, all of a sudden they turn red, and it says illegal selection, uh, because you can't have more than 12 boys in a truck. So we got to keep that below 12. But let's say I wanted to add a knob. We scroll back up, you can add units, and you add a boys knob. So I click that, and all of a sudden now it's no longer valid because we have 13 guys in a truck, so we got to decrease that. There's these plus and minus buttons right here for quickly increasing and decreasing how many, how many guys are in a squad. Or you can right-click on it, and you can adjust count, and you can do it there. Or you can click Specify Model Count if you want to just type in how many models are in there. And then the knob, we can come in here and we can give it the Almighty Power Claw, which every knob should have and maybe give them a boss pull as well because those work more often than they don't. Now let's say I wanted to bring four groups just like this. Well I don't have to redo all of that. I can just right click on this, oh, right click on the top here and click duplicate squad. And there's a second one, third one, and a fourth one. You see that the points are being updated automatically. You can see over here the composition summary tells me how many of the troops and the NHQ I have and it's all valid right now. Right now all validation rules are satisfied. Yes, I don't have 2,000 points, but in order for it to be a valid 2,000 point army, it needs to have less than 2,000 points. Less than or equal to. So let's say I want to add in some elites. So let's go to Elite Squad. We like Ludas. So we'll grab that and we'll make it a 10 Ludas. And then we'll duplicate that maybe twice. So we'll have three squads of 10 Ludas. And then we'll go over to the heavy support and we'll choose a battle wagon. And because it's a battle wagon, you have to give it a def roller. And maybe we'll give it uh, armor plates and art case. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this actually good. And we'll give it a can kill cannon and cannon. And we'll give it a bunch of big shooters. Or maybe we'll give it a bunch of rocket launches. See how we can hit the plus and minus here and choose the different things. I can give it two big shooters and two rocket launches. We'll do that. So we're up to 1358. So we'll go back to the heavy support. Let's grab a group of kill killer cans. Now you see that it starts off red because you have to choose some options. First off, I want there to be three killer cans. And so I press that twice and make it up to three. And now I can choose, maybe one will have a big shooter, and we want to abuse the wound allocation rules for 40k, so we're going to add a rocket launcher and a scorcha, so they each have something different. And then we'll give two of them grot riggers and one of them armor plates, just for the heck of it, just so we can really confuse our opponent. And we'll go to the fast attack, and we'll grab some storm boys. And um, we'll make this a big group of 20 storm boys. We'll add a storm boys knob, and then we'll select him, and we'll give him a power claw, because they should always have a power claw. And uh, let's duplicate this. So we'll right click that and duplicate it. Now we're up to, oh, we went over 2,000 points. So everything turned red and points limit is exceeded. So I gotta, I gotta decrease something. So let's grab these Storm Boys and decrease three of them. And over here we'll decrease three of them and perfect. Sure, we're four points shy, but we're below or equal to the 2,000 points. So my army is built. Now what do I do? Well, now I can output it. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. The most common way is simply to print it. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a print preview here. So it prints it like this. Let me zoom in. This is gonna be three pages. And you can see the pictures that I put in there. 
You don't have to have the pictures. I'll show you the options that you can get rid of them. And it shows you the, the units, and it shows you their stats, it shows you their special rules. And the nice thing is, all those special rules, the ones that are uh, in the codex at least, if you go to the third page, or at the end of basically all the units, underneath that it, start, it gives you the rules. Now sometimes they won't show you all the rules because uh, they'll say refer to the codex, page, so-and-so. Uh, and that way they're trying to not infringe too much on copyright laws and everything. But all the basic rules will be there. And you should have your codex and rule book anyway for reference. And so you have all of these different things. It also tells you the validation so that you can show it to your opponent. And if your opponent trusts the Army Builder program, which they should, they'll see that it's set to a normal mission, that it's orcs, and that the roster satisfies all enforced validation rules. And then it gives you some fun statistics like what percentage of your army in points wise is elite, fast, heavy, and HQ, how many models there are, the percentage that's troops, and how much you spent on war gear. Now I think that's obviously it's showing zero and we did put some points into war gear so I'm not sure how that's governed. It doesn't really matter. And then right here it shows you the force organization and how many you're allowed to have and then how many you actually used. So it has all those details for you and it shows all the weapons too and their ranges, strengths, AP, and what type of weapon they are. So very useful. So we're going to close that. You can also save it as a PDF and do whatever you want as a PDF. And you have some customization you can do here. You can change the view. You can actually go through all the different stats and decide not to include certain ones. You can see the preview here at the top. So if we got rid of attacks, you can see the attacks disappeared. Or we can actually change the size of the columns. You can see the column getting bigger or smaller. So if there is certain tweaks you want to do to exactly how it looks, you have complete control over that. We can even go to the advanced and tell it not to include the user images. And so if we select that and go back to the preview, you'll notice that the images are no longer there when we zoom in. Or we could tell it to have the options on separate lines. So if we preview that, you'll see that the options are all on separate lines rather than all laid out. And that way, if you need to look at them that way, you can. Some of these things you're going to think, well, why would I want to do that? And that's fine. That's why it's customization. You can do it exactly how you like it. You can even repeat header columns for all squads. So let's preview that. And you see that it has the weapon skill, ballistic skill strength, so you don't have to look back up and try to line them up. So there's lots of different options that you have here. And all these other things as well. And of course, you can even customize fonts and the colors. So certain things will stand out more than others, like the topmost banner, the header bar, unit stats, unit item counts. This is ridiculous the amount of customization that you have with this program. So let's cancel that. The other useful output is to save it as a mobile roster. In this case, you would save it as an HTML file, which you could then upload to your website and or some other place. And then you're able to look at it with your iPhone. Uh, and that looks just like the print output. And then a really interesting one is to save a custom output. There's some different options here. You can generate XML files. You can generate an HTML roster output that looks like the printed output. So you can put it on a website. And you got to be careful with that one because uh, you'll be showing off unit stats and rules and all of that. So you want to adhere to the different copyright laws. But this one's really interesting. The unit cards, 3x3 three three unit cards. I'm going to show you what those look like. This is the, this is one of the armies. This is not the army I just made. Um, but this is another orc army, and this is this is in unit cards. So you can actually print these off. These are three by three, and they're three wide, and and uh, well, there's eleven of them here in this case. And it shows you the stats and the options and how much each of the options cost. And so that's really useful, especially for games like War Machine or Hordes, where you have the unit cards. And then of course it has all the rules at the bottom. So you have all these different output options that this allows you to do. You might find yourself only using one or two of them. But really what it comes down to is the maximum value in this in this program is in quickly being able to throw together an army and being able to customize it and then print it out and be ready to go. We can throw together an army in, a, in one or two minutes and it saves all that writing down and calculating. I realize that math is not that hard to do, but when you're doing a lot of games, you want to just quickly throw these together. It's also fun because you can quickly go in and tweak. I can go in and say, all right, I want a few less boys here and a few less here, and then I'll add a unit over here and see what I can do. So you're able to tweak it a lot easier without having to recalculate every single time you do it. So great program. You can even go ahead and, and put a, a title of your army Matthew's Orcs, and then uh, I believe when we preview this, let's just, yeah, there we are. It's right at the top there, Matthew's Orcs, so you can even keep track of it. And the nice thing is you can save your army roster for later use, so you can open it back up and modify it, or you can reuse it if you really liked it. So lots of different possibilities what you can do with this program.
So I hope that you enjoyed this demo of Army Builder. Like I said, you can buy it at most online stores and retail stores where Wargaming products are sold, such as store.miniwargaming.com, or even on Wolf Layer's site as well. Make sure you uh, take a look at it and you pick it up, because once you have it, it's good for years to come. We've, like I said, we've been using ours for four years. We've probably bought about four of them for the various computers that we have in our club and in the back as well in our offices. This is Matthew from miniwargaming.com. Happy Wargaming.